So this is Timothy. Timothy's coming in today because of a rapidly um, infected lesion on the left upper side of his back. The complications we'll have here are a couple fold. Um, first of all, we're in the clinic, so we don't have the usual tools we would have to do this. Secondly, uh, Tim has end stage um, liver cancer. The problem that creates, we have to have him on his side, so the position is far from ideal um, because he's got ascites on the other side. Um, plus, as I explained before to you, freezing, or more appropriately anesthetic, functions on an acid base volume. Um, basis, sorry. So what usually happens is we inject an anesthetic, which is acidic, the body then makes it neutral, it goes into the cell and that's how it works. When the environment is more acidic, it doesn't matter how much you inject, it doesn't take it up as well. So these marks you see here, I've done a circum circumferential block, and I would tell residents when you're doing this, I've used the bovi, the hyphricator, just to cauterize them so you can somewhat clean your field a little bit. So hopefully here we'll have enough freezing that this won't be too uncomfortable, but it may still be uncomfortable because not only is the infection causing an acid base problem, but in his particular case, with liver issues and ammonia levels rising, his whole system may be acidic, which makes this even more difficult. So I'm gonna add in a little extra freezing now. Um, you're gonna feel a poke here, Timothy. Tom. Tom, sorry. Does that hurt there, Tom? No. I'm trying to get just underneath it. Okay. I don't feel a thing. Good. So that's a good sign that we might be fortunate here and I'm wide enough out that this will take. But that's why when you see other videos, especially ones done in the eMERGE setting, don't be too quick to criticize the person who's doing it. Sometimes you just cannot get the freezing in when it's infected. Gotcha. Yeah, what? A little bit. So again, this is just a hyphricator. I'm just going to cauterize that one spot just to try and keep our field as clean as possible for as long as we can. Can I just change the bandage? Yes, you can. Do you feel that, Tom? Does that hurt? No. No pain there? No. Nope. All right. Oh, she can. Yeah, she can. So in terms of incision lines again, this will be a horizontal incision. And hopefully we can control the mess a little bit. It's going to feel some pressure here, Tom. And the issue here being, is this all abscess, or is there a cyst underlying it? How long do I keep this going in bandages? Well, we'll see you again tomorrow. Okay. So you can see the purulent material is coming out. So that's just white cell. This seems a bit thicker. So this looks like an infected cyst, more than just an abscess. Yeah. Now you have to be careful with this. So typically, you'll see in some videos that they wear shields. And that's trying to minimize the degree to which this will come out at you. So since we're going to try and see if we can avoid um, having to pack this, and packing is a, an interesting debate to be had. The newer studies are showing that we don't need to pack these. However, lots of us will still pack them um, if there's an issue with hemostasis. So if this is just bleeding, 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 we may still pack it. The other problem we'll get into is if we can't have good clearance and get at it and clean the cyst out nicely, we may want to pack it. Now I'm going to use a curette see if we can clear the walls a little bit. This is another thing, it seems obvious to do this, but if say his freezing hadn't taken well, the anesthesia hadn't taken well, you want to be very careful because if you're doing this it can be quite uncomfortable for the patient and if you're going to end up packing anyway it's not as critical because likely loculations will break down on subsequent days when you're seeing them back again.
Uh, maybe about a centimeter. Over an inch? Uh, no, less than that. So I'm just, because the anesthesia is good in this case, I'm being a bit more aggressive with the curette. Yeah. You're okay there, Tom? Well, I don't feel pain. Good. I'm going to use just some absorbent Q-tips and just see if we can clean that out a little bit. You got the Q-tip laying side, right? Yeah, I do. Does it look like I got a roots in there? Uh, well, that's what we were talking about, whether this is a cyst inside there, and it looks like there is. Can you take it out? Uh, no, not when it's infected, I can't. So the other thing we're going to do with this, we're going to irrigate it. And this is the other debate to be had. When do you irrigate, when do you not? For the most part, you should irrigate. But if you, were, if you knew you were packing, again, it becomes less less important because this is going to be open and healing by secondary intention. Now, this will be healing by secondary intention anyway, but because I'm trying to avoid packing, I certainly want to make sure that we irrigate it. Yeah. To make sure that this is clean as possible. You have to tomorrow, are you going to do more work? Yeah, so tomorrow, we should, this, this opening, Tom, should allow this to uh, clear for us so that tomorrow we can come back and then clean it out a bit more. a bit more and again you're going to notice this is could be cleaner depending on position but lots of times in medicine I don't mind being uncomfortable or making the procedure a little bit more messy if the patient's comfortable you have to freeze it yeah that's why you're not feeling much because it's well frozen you know it, tomorrow are you going to have to freeze it again? Uh, no, probably not, actually. And that's his point is well taken. If you're packing this, and this is why we've gotten away from packing, um, this can be really uncomfortable for the patient. So as you can see there, um, inside it looks relatively clean, and it's not oozing too much. So we should get away with just a pressure dressing, pressure dressing in this case. So you can stop that right now.